The French short film, A Trip to the Moon, by the film pioneer Georges Méliès, 1861-1938, who in turn was inspired by the work From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne, already deals with the journey to the Earth Companion by means of a cannon. However, due to the g-forces that occur, this would not be a good idea. Or would it? The US military was at least temporarily of a different opinion and supported the HARP project, short for High Altitude Research Project, together with the Canadian Ministry of Defence in the 1960s to develop a 16-inch cannon with which subcaliber sabotage projectiles for upper atmosphere research were launched. Until today, this project holds the world altitude record with 179 kilometers for any fired projectile. The electronics had to withstand tens of thousands of Gs at launch and were potted in a mix of sand and epoxy. Behind the project was the Canadian engineer and long-range artillery specialist Gerard Bull, who was assassinated in Brussels in March 1990, presumably because he was working on Project Babylon for the Iraqi government at the time. Parts of the supergun from this project can be seen today at the Royal Armouries, Fort Nelson in Portsmouth. Today, our preferred transportation system is the rocket, or more specifically, the chemical rocket engine, so named because a chemical reaction takes place. Rocket engines operate on the recoil principle, which is defined by Newton's third axiom, actio equals reactio. The basic rocket equation was first established by Tsiolkovsky in 1903 and describes the fundamental law. According to this, for the velocity change delta V besides the initial mass m0 and the final mass mf, the effective outflow velocity of the gases VE where the specific impulse is included, plays a role. In order to enter an Earth orbit, one must at least reach the so-called first cosmic velocity, also called circular orbital velocity, of 7.9 kilometers per second, about 28,000 kilometers per hour. The equation is also the reason why multi-stage rockets are still used today since a higher speed can be achieved by cutting off burned out stages and thus jettisoning unnecessary mass. So-called single stage systems, from the surface directly into orbit without individual stage separations, are still dreams of the future, since even SpaceX's Starship and Blue Origin's New Glenn will have more than one stage. However, there are ideas for mitigating the consequences of the rocket equation. For example, using a magnetic levitation sled as a launch aid to dramatically increase the initial velocity of a glider attached to it before it fires its own engines and lifts off into orbit. Put succinctly, trans-rapid magnetic levitation technology could be crossed with the Sanger Space Glider. The Sanger Space Glider is a space transporter for low Earth orbit. Developed by Eugen Sanger, 1905-1964, because Sanger was seriously involved with advanced space concepts shortly after the space age had just begun and the first man-made satellites had been launched, he and his work were opposed far beyond his death. Because this concept has a unique appeal, NASA at the Marshall Space Flight Center worked on the Star Tram in the 1990s and several tests of such a system were conducted. However, this idea has not yet been implemented due to cost. But such an electromagnetic catapult opens up another possibility, namely on the Moon. By means of magnetic coils, it will be possible to launch raw materials from the Moon at low cost, since a lower escape velocity is necessary there. This idea is not new, and science fiction author Robert A. Heinlein already wrote about an induction catapult in his 1966 work, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Later, it was Gerard K. O'Neill of Princeton University and Henry Colm of MIT who publicized the idea of a mass driver in 1977 at the Space Manufacturing Facilities Conference and also had students build a technology demonstrator called Mass Driver One. 
This involved cooling the coils with liquid nitrogen to lower electrical resistance and achieved an acceleration of 33 g. This would mean that an acceleration distance of 8,905 meters would be needed on the moon to lift off successfully. Later, a mass driver 2 and 3 were built, and through various optimizations, the acceleration could be increased to 500 g mass driver 2 and 1,800 g mass driver 3, so that in the end, only an acceleration distance of 160 meters would be necessary to launch from the lunar surface. Once in lunar orbit, these raw materials could easily be picked up and transported further. But this technology could not only be used on the Moon, but also for mining raw materials on an asteroid. What do you think about this idea? Write your opinion in the comments.